1977, I'd done the physical training instructor course with the Royal Australian Navy, actually down at Cerberus, down, um, here in, just down out of Melbourne. Um, most of that was just based on, you know, what we, we worked sort of that flogging, flog you to death sort of attitude, you know. You just got out there and you did it. And if you were told to go and run 10Ks or 20Ks, you just went and done it, you know what I mean? Or you were told to jump and carry weights on your back and jump and that and all, all these things we used to do on them days. You just went and done it. That was it. You didn't. Have, there was no. Oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you didn't. You just went and done it. Um, in the 90s I, or late 80s, 1990s, I got out of the navy and I went and worked at Goulburn Jail um, in New South Wales. I'm not sure. Just to let you know where guys, those people not from Australia and that. I worked at maximum security jail there, teaching inmates fitness. Anybody ever sort of worked in jails? <laughs> Anybody been in jail? For? Okay, great experience. Um, you know, not sort of the name people and all those sort of things, but there were some really big heavy dudes in them days. I'm talking about some monsters, you know, and guys with some really sort of bad criminal history as well, you know what I mean? So there was a bit of everyone there sort of um, based a lot of it, these guys pumping weights, getting as big as they can. And they'd come and say, Steve, can you tell me about this? Can you tell me about that? And ask them questions. I'd say, look at the size of you, you know what I mean? Sort of me asking them. So... It was a really good experience. Um, guys had all day to train, in a sense, or a lot of them just focused on training while they are in jail. Um, as they got out of jail, I suppose, um, that focus changed to drugs and getting back on the drugs and things like that. Guys that I'd seen come out like, before when they left jail, they were like monsters. Six or 12 months later, they'd be back in jail and they'd be like stick figures. They'd been on the drugs and things like that. So you, you see how the body can change and stuff, you know what I mean, when you're... Really, sort of, I suppose, in a sense, um, being in a strict environment to then having your own choice a little bit. So, another great experience. And now, well, 2000 present, I'm a fitness teacher at New South Wales PAFE uh, in, in New South Wales, a technical adult further education. Um, anyone have that? Just a little bit of my own sporting career, because I thought I thought this was going to be a little bit important, because this is how I got into high intensity training. This is part where I'm sort of going to move to, where I actually moved to. So, um, a whole history, a lot of years, different training routines, groups, and different things, and doing a lot of different sports and things. And at some point, my sporting career started to come to a bit of an end, which I'll get to in a minute. I was my main days a lot of endurance events. I was, you know. Um, Australian champion, different triathlon events and things like that, you know what I mean? Um, all my training was based basically endurance, um, aerobic sort of base type training. The only type of, and I, sorry, sorry, probably the only type of, two reasons I've done weight training in a sense was to supplement my triathlon career or my, my endurance events I was involved and maybe to go to the gym and check the girls out at the gym as well sort of thing. So, so at that point, even though I had a reasonably good knowledge of, of sort of weight training or exercise, most of my focus was on, on in these endurance events until I got to a point where I started to get injured. And I couldn't train. And I was thinking, hang on a minute, I'm sort of, I enjoy my training, I enjoy my exercise. I'm not a fanatic in that sense. I enjoy the triathlons and that, but I sort of was starting to think, you know, injuries are coming, torn calf muscles, I've got to really do something else. So, and I started to think about what I was going to do. So that, that's sort of probably just how my initiation into high intensity training came all about. Uh, weight training, and, and I've done a lot of boxing training, chasing and things. So now this is just a little bit of the history of the high intensity training, where, where it developed and how it really sort of come different to what most people were doing in that 70s period. This sort of originated in the 1970s. Um, a guy called Arthur Jones was the founder of Nautilus. Uh, I don't know if anyone's used Nautilus equipment or trained Nautilus equipment. It's went out of vogue for a fair while. It's come back into vogue now. But he, he moved into this um, selling Nautilus equipment. So that's sort of where this high intensity training and Arthur's suggestions to what most people were doing was really just total opposite, total opposite of what they were doing. Okay, he came onto the scene, nobody really knew him, he'd done a bit of bodybuilding, he'd done all these other things, he was about in his 50s or something, and all of a sudden he's this guy telling everybody how to train properly. 
So he, he was the main driving force. Uh, stories of him, he used to walk around with a gun and stuff, you know what I mean, pistol on his hip and things. He lived in Florida, I think, uh, at the time, in, in D-Land, Florida. Um, and he started this movement. Some of the guys you got in the pictures there, which I'll sort of mention in a minute, um, all originated out of this 1970s period. Okay, um, Casey Beata and a few of those other guys might mention in there. Um, so after the founder of HIT, Ellington Darden, um, and these guys have all wrote books and stuff, so again, if you want to get a little bit of information about these, see some of these guys. And Jim Flanagan was another one of these um, originators of this high intensity. There's a lot more people involved. They looked at making exercise machines. Okay, Nautilus type exercise machines. There was a reason why they looked at making exercise machines, and I'll sort of try and get into that a little bit in a minute, why that sort of came about. Now, if you just uh, like, Casey Viata was one of the most famous bodybuilders of, of the time. Um, there's pictures of him there. Mike Mentzer and Ray and his brother and Sergio Olivia and Frank Brown. Some of these, Dorian Yates, is, I don't know if anyone heard of Dorian Yates, anyone sort of blood and guts and that, he's got his, um, you go on YouTube and that, so I left that there, he's some really good, sorry, YouTube sort of videos of him if you want to just, um, and I think Dorian's a bit more of the later period too, you know what I mean? So he came a bit later in the 90s, but Mr. Olympia and all those types of people win the bench. Now, this is where I think I come in with the other guys and that, noted authors and stuff that I sort of now started to look at, read, and I start to try and understand what this high intensity training was all about. What did it mean? Uh, Drew Bay, Doug McGuff, John Little, and John Philbin, and there's many more high intensity writers, but they're some of the guys I really sort of like, you know, I mean, when I'm reading stuff and trying to get some more knowledge and et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, Doug McGuff and John Little, 2010, in, uh, wrote or pr produced a book called Body by Science. I know the couple of Anthony that's read it, and I don't know if anyone's ever heard that the book Body by Science. I think in some of the YouTube videos or some stuff that Anthony's done before, it sort of um, really started to get people to think as well. Now. If I just go back to John Philbin, he wrote high intensity, more power, more strength in, in a quicker time. If if I can sort of just give you a couple of minutes here of my sort of initiation, as I said before, I, I started to get a few injuries from triathlons and stuff, and I started to sort of think, well, hang on, what to do? So one day I picked up this book called, written by John Philbin, and I started to read it. And I thought, oh, okay, that sort of, you know, lifting the weight up and down, etc., and doing these things, and doing momentary muscular failure and that. I think, what's all this mean? You know what I mean? So I sort of started to have to teach myself it. And that's how I sort of started to learn it. I started to teach myself, you know what I mean? So what I do for you sort of guys and stuff is that I'd teach myself, and I'd go to tape with some students, and I'd trial it out on them and see how they handled it. So I was a bit of a... I had my own audience, if you know what I mean, and I used to see how many of them could do it. And a lot of these guys, massively strong guys, just couldn't do it. Guys that trained for hours and stuff, when I'd done it properly with them, or, you know, as we'd done high-intensity training, couldn't do the exercises. And these were guys who were not small guys, and some of them really big and strong, you know what I mean? So, so I just sort of moved there, but Doug sort of really threw them Cat amongst the pigeons, 12 minutes a week. How can you do 12 minutes a week? So we had um, sort of, how can I do 12 minutes of training a week? They sort of looked at what they call the big five, and that was they based the exercises on, which was the leg press or, or squat type exercise, overhead press, the lap pull down, chest press, and so I just called them their names, but you can use different free weights and machines and different other variations or body weight that as well if you want to. So it sort of took us to another step. There's a, also, Doug's got a website, Body by Science, and basically from that we sort of started to um, look at, geez, trying to reduce this training down into um, sort of um, 12 minutes a week. I'll come back to this in a minute. Why don't I move a little bit further and I'll go back through the old high intensity training methods and we'll sort of come back through to that if that's all right. So John Philbin's book. Now, 
this is what he said, the foundation of the high intensity training system is performing the perfect rep. Now I know um, Mark and even David was talking about the perfect rep. It wasn't how much you lifted or whatever else you did, it was how you did it. Okay, how you perform the perfect repetition. Everything revolved around the perfect rep, so we sort of take away Minimise the momentum and maximise muscle tension. Does anybody understand what I mean by that? Minimise momentum and maximise muscle tension. So all of a sudden, we're not doing the bicep curls like David showed you, sort of thing, doing that. We were doing them nice and strict and that, you know what I mean? So we were starting to look at the form, how we did it. Not what we did and that, it was how we actually did it. Anybody go to the gym? We got many people go to the gym? What do you see at the gym? People exercising. I'm not picking on anyone here, but you'll see a lot of different ways, won't you? <laughs> and a lot of... When you sort of start looking at what the perfect rep is, you start to look and see what in the gym. A lot of bad stuff. And it becomes quite noticeable. And you see it very, very noticeable. When I'm teaching you know, the guys, and even the girls here, it's TAFE when I teach them, a lot of the girls go to the gym and a lot of the girls don't lift weights. When I take them to the gym, show them how to do the exercise correctly and properly, they're the first ones to come over and say, oh, Steve, look at him, look at him, oh, look at what he's doing. And they, you can pick it up. It's very evident once you sort of know what the perfect repetition is. 